Welcome back to another episode of Jermaine Morgan TV. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk to you about swing versus straight. Let's work on feel. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. And if this is your first time joining me, do me a huge favor before we get started. Go ahead and press the subscribe button. Also, press the like button. This helps this video be found by more people like you. And as usual, I really, really appreciate you guys being here. If you find something helpful, please be sure to leave a comment. Thank you, as always. So jumping right into the lesson, I wanted to deal with something. I'm constantly being asked about this sometimes in my one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with other bass players. Some of the things they're asking me about is implementing with feel, implementing and understanding the swing versus straight. Because we've been talking about timing, we've been talking about just different things we can use over the groove, getting in and out. But sometimes, I'll be honest, I fail to realize how difficult it is for some of you newer players to understand the swing and understand application for the swing. So I wanted to use this lesson as an opportunity today to really differentiate between swing versus straight, getting down to the root of what that is and how you can start subdividing it better so you can understand it over a groove. So right off the bat, I was playing at the beginning of this lesson, uh, Chicken by James Brown or Jocko, whoever you got introduced to the chicken by. But it's just a really simple groove everybody knows. If you've been to a jam session at any point, more than likely they're gonna play this song. So the thing about this song, it kind of has a little bit of both within the song. It kind of has a little bit of swing, a little bit of straight, but for the most part, most people play this song straight. And so when I say straight, one of the things I kind of pay attention to, and I've kind of preached this, if you've been around me for a while, you know, I'm always about listening to the drummer. It's something about that drum and bass connection that really makes for a good solid feel and a solid bass line. Some of the things I'm really listening to are like the uh, the hi-hat pattern, the ride pattern, or if you got any type of auxiliary drums like uh, percussion or, you know, like with shakers and the congas or bongos, those kind of things. I'm listening to the feel of that to really give me what I need to be doing in the right hand because ultimately the left hand stays the same. Whether we're playing this or whether we're swinging it. So you see what I'm saying? The left hand keeps doing the same thing. What changes is the feel in the right hand and being able to kind of know what to do in my right hand. I'm listening for, if I don't have a clue, this is a starting point for me. I'm listening for, okay, what is the drummer doing over this particular groove? So if he was gonna play it straight, you would hear a hi-hat pattern something like this. Some along those lines, it's like, one E and a two E and a three E and a four. So he's got one, two, three, four, like that's really when you have something that's more simple. To me, that's kind of wide open. You don't really know where it goes, but if you hear the subdivision of the hi-hat or the ride or something like that. So we have. So now I'm hearing that it's one E and if the count is one E and a two E and a three E and a four, and I put that in context. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3. So I put that in context, I can see where those fall on the grid. So now you have the whole groove. You see what I'm saying? So now I'm hearing where everything falls and that groove sounds straight to me. One and a three and a three and a four and a one. You see what I'm saying? So now that's suggesting to me with my right hand what I'm doing. I'm doing it on one note so you can kind of get the feel of what I'm doing. So I'm following that. So again. And so I'm just following that hi-hat. So the same thing, we would take the same approach 
if we were to st uh, start thinking about swinging, I know for some of you guys that are not familiar with just swinging on a regular groove, it's like your mind might automatically, when I say swing, go to... You know what I'm saying? You might think of something like that, which is correct, because you have something more along the lines of... You know what I'm saying? You're thinking about something along that lines, and you would be correct, but you can also use that for the same the same pattern that's going on with that ride. If we switch it to the hi-hat. That rhythm that's happening, it's the same thing. It's just, it's used in different contexts. So, Our subdivision count is still the same, but the way we count it is different. One E and the two, E and the three, E and the four. It's like a little bit more jumpy. One E and the two, E and jumpy, lack of better words. That's all I got. So <laughs> it's a little bit more jumpy. So the feel is different. So if we're talking feel, it's not one E and the two, E and the, it's not this. It's not that, it's. You see what I'm saying? So now we have the. A good example that I used early part of this week with the student was like, think about the uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the theme song. When it comes on, you have that. It gives you that swing pattern. So you got that same swing thing. It's all the same thing as it relates to the feel. It just matters how you place it when you're playing the different songs because you, it's either gonna be straight or it's gonna be swing if it's in a 4-4 type pattern. And there are some other time signatures that apply before today's lesson. I'm just strictly dealing with 4-4. When we're talking swing versus straight, it's either swinging or it's straight. So I wanted to be able to kind of give you guys the just the differentiation between those two for you guys that don't understand or you're just kind of struggling with it just a little bit, trying to figure out, okay, what kind of feels can I add to this song or what, what kind of approach, rather, can I add to these feels that I'm putting in these songs as you're putting together your, your major and your minor pentatonics and you're adding your major scales and all these different things, but you don't know how to quite approach them over the groove. Listen to the hi-hat pattern and just pull from that. So listen, guys, this was just an introductory lesson. If you want to jump more into this lesson, remember, you need to become a part of the monthly membership lessons if you haven't done that already. And I haven't mentioned it, but I have added an exclusive membership to the monthly membership lessons where you get a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me where we can sit down and we can talk about this stuff one-on-one. -on -one. Be sure to check that out. I'll put the link in the description where you can find out a little bit more about that as well. So before I go, I wanted to announce the final winner for the SIT Strings giveaway, Mr. Sid Bates. I've been seeing Mr. Sid supporting this channel for years and I just want to say thank you for your support and for anybody else who's watching out there and I see your comments consistently, thank you. I really appreciate all the comments. I don't always get an opportunity to respond to everyone personally, but I do read the comments when they show up and they are encouraging when you guys give the positive feedback and I really appreciate it. I also wanted to send a special shout out for someone that's watching who probably has no clue that I know that they're watching is Mr. Tom Gates, that's my uncle. 83 years old you don't even play music but the fact that you support this channel and you consistently watch i just want to say thank you to the entire gates family i send my condolences during this time but most of all just thank you for supporting my channel and supporting me and <laughs> being a good uncle i really appreciate the support last but not least as you guys know i'm not able to give away strings to everybody there's no way i can do that it's thousands of you guys but what i can do is offer you two free bass licks that are not on youtube anywhere I want to offer to you and the link is right below so be sure before you leave this video to claim your two free base links and I will see you guys on the next lesson I'm out peace